You have delivered a great pitch, they liked what you said, and now you have several investors that are interested in following up. They can see it's an exciting opportunity, but it's not a done deal, yet. They want to invest, but not before they have done their due diligence. Are you ready? Following a successful investment pitch, you will be asked a lot of questions, and these will be followed up in more detail when the investors arrange the follow-up meeting. So, what would you expect to be asked about at the pitch questions and answers? It's important that you are prepared and you should practice before the meeting. And be prepared to educate and inform your audience. They may not have fully understood the commercial opportunity. There are a number of common areas that come up in these Q&A sessions. Here are some key examples for you as a useful guide. Clarification of your unique selling point. Investors want to know why you are better than your competitors. Why would someone change what they are doing now? Are you really cheaper, faster or better? Your finance slide is often questioned and you will be asked to justify any inflection points in the revenue or income. When do you expect to raise more finance? Where is that likely to come from? And when can they see a return on their investment? The time to exit and the return on investment does depend on your technology and trends in that sector. Wherever possible, base your financial model on comparable companies and technologies. Investors will want to understand how customers will buy the product, what is the cost of sale, and do you understand the sales cycle. The total addressable market and your target market is an area that is discussed. It needs to correlate with income generation and your operational plans. Have you checked that everything has been accounted for and that the numbers stack up? For very early stage companies, investors want to see that you understand the route to market and that you have a plan to reach and acquire customers. For companies that have a product, they will be interested in your beta testing, early collaborations and how you plan to convert these to customers. If you already have customers, discussions may be centered around the cost to acquire, how you plan to keep them and how you're going to grow your customer base. Again, they may ask you about the sales cycle and how you will reach the customer. Sometimes you will be asked about your milestones and where the greatest business risks are. Questioning can be tough. The more prepared you are, the less daunting it will be and the more control you will have over the process. Some investors may push you to see how you can handle the pressure. It is important to always make sure you have understood the question. Paraphrase if you are unsure and then check by asking, did I answer your question? If you think the questioning is going off at a tangent, make sure it stays on track with a simple acknowledgement such as, let's discuss this later. If you cannot answer the question, do say so and follow up with a statement such as, I don't know, but I will find out and I'll get back to you. Due diligence is a more comprehensive follow-up. The investors will have a set of questions that they will want to cover. If possible, ask for these ahead of the meeting so you can be prepared. Make sure you have all the supplementary information at hand to back up your investment pitch. It is helpful to have a prepared due diligence folder that you can share ahead of your meeting. This can include technical and commercial information as well as legal documents. The easy stuff to answer is usually around your R&D plan, the product, people and competition. However, an investor is more likely to focus on your customers, route to market, detailed financial information, sales, distribution and legal contracts. R&D questions will be straightforward and will focus on strategy, existing technology and your intellectual property rights. Do you have a new product pipeline? How is it delivered and at what cost? Questions on the product will focus on the value proposition, customers, market share and sales costs. People questions may include those about the management team, executive and non-executive, any advisors and how the team will grow.
They will want to know what contracts and incentive plans you have in place to retain key staff. The competitor landscape is important to an investor as it helps them understand the opportunity for growth. What are the trends and drivers and what is special about you and your technology? To sell your product, you need to demonstrate that you know how to reach your customers. Projected revenue by customer type and needs should be explained in detail. As a director of a company, you have many financial and legal obligations. If you're unclear about any element, do get professional advice before pitching for investment. Financial projections are hard to estimate when you are a pre-revenue, early stage company. However, you should be certain about the monthly burn rate and costs for the next 12 to 18 months. If you're looking for angel investment, you may need to demonstrate eligibility for SEIS or EIS. Have you claimed all your eligible R&D tax credits? Questions on marketing, sales and distribution are all about your strategy to grow the business. They demonstrate that you understand your customers and where you are in the value chain. Investors will want to check that you have budgeted enough to be able to achieve your financial milestones. Again, as a director of the company, you will have legal responsibility for technology and operational contracts. This can range from staff employment contracts to managing your intellectual property rights. Do not forget the importance of compliance and national and international regulatory standards. Make sure you have prepared your investment heads of terms. Once the due diligence is completed, the investor will make a decision on how much they want to invest and at what valuation. Be prepared to negotiate and always take legal advice before you commit to signing any contract. Remember, in due diligence, you can never be over-prepared. Good luck. <laughs>